This is Church of Uganda Family TV Enriching Lives This is Church of Uganda Family TV. We are big on family and I want to tell you that you are a member of my family when it comes to issues at hand. My name is Bruno Edgard. Thank you for joining us today. And when it comes to issues at hand, we tackle very pertinent issues that are happening in our society. And we usually have an elder who comes to help us find solutions to these issues. Now it's a Friday and that means we have someone from the police force who's going to take us through uh, an issue that is affecting our society today. Now the issue that we are tackling today on issues at hand is the issue of road safety as far as our Ugandan roads are concerned. We want to know why are there so many accidents in, uh, in our roads? What can we do as a society and as a country to cap down on this? Do we understand traffic road signs? What is the traffic police doing to ensure that uh, we all adhere to the rules and regulations as far as road safety is concerned? Now, of course, you can get in touch with us by sending us a WhatsApp message on 0787 seven six eight four that zero seven eight seven four four seven six eight four and we shall read out your comments and queries and our guest will respond to your queries adequately now my guest for today is sp kawuma in serico rogers who is the commander traffic and road safety when it comes to kampala metropolitan police you are very welcome to issues at hand thank you and hello viewers is there anyone else you'd like, apart from the viewers, that you'd like to send a special greeting to? Uh, of course, uh, to all Ugandans who are watching this program at this moment. Uh, it is a privilege, and I thank Family TV for the opportunity. Uh, why? Because you reach far. You reach far, far more where I can't reach myself. So it is an opportunity to have the public get to know about the concerns that we are having today. Yes, and the concern we're having today is mm. road safety. Now, we are going to start from the first base, from nursery school. Take us through traffic and road safety guidelines, mm. guidelines that are key when it comes to road safety. Some of the things that, especially when it comes to traffic police, some of the things you've seen in your experience mm. that the public needs to know we have to adhere to. Yeah. Maybe we do not know these traffic rules and regulations. Yeah, thank you. And um, again, that is a very good question because most people think that on the road it is only the motorist that is responsible uh, for safety. Yet actually, anyone who steps on the road, if you wake up and you step on the road, whether you are a road, you are uh, uh, a pedestrian, whether you are a motorist, whether you are uh, a cyclist, all of us have a certain jacket that we have to wear, the jacket of responsibility. It is an imaginary jacket, but it is there. So whoever steps on the road, it is paramount that you ensure safety, first of all for yourself and for others. But uh, I think people lack that, that detail and you see some carelessness on the road, some recklessness on the road, some inconsiderate you know, use of the road and it has affected us negatively because at the end of the day we end up losing so many people in road traffic crashes which is very uncalled for. Why? Because most of these accidents are avoidable are avoidable but alas it is it is so bad the situation is so bad if you follow the monday briefings at police headquarters by our PRO or every monday you'll be overwhelmed by the numbers of accidents that we get in just a week in just a week you hear of 500 accidents in the, whole of, in the whole of Uganda. It's not just in Kampala. But still, it is a big number. Then in a week, you hear that we've lost 80 people in these road traffic crashes. I think the situation is bad. 
And we all need to know that we are, first of all, you know, people think that it's, it is police that is supposed to police them 24-7. No, don't get it twisted. Safety begins with you, the road user, before even, I even come in. There is what we call the, the highway code. It's a small book like this. But it has these nitty gritties on how to use the road. If you're a pedestrian, how are you supposed to use the road? Which side of the road are you supposed to be uh, using when you're moving? Uh, when you're crossing the road, what are you supposed to do? What are these uh, markings on the road mean? It is a small book, but it is so detailed and it is so rich with information that will help a, a road user to know what to do. You know, for example, a simple thing like uh, being a pedestrian and moving on the right. People don't know they're supposed, they're, they're supposed to move on the right of the road. These are pedestrians. Pedestrians. When you're moving on the road, you're supposed to be moving on the right. For reason being that you're seeing the oncoming traffic. You get my point. Otherwise, if you, you move on, on the left of the road, when the traffic is coming from, from vehicular behind. traffic, is coming from behind you. In case a vehicle loses control, it is very easy uh, to be surprised by an accident from the back. Yet when you are moving on the right, you are seeing oncoming traffic. If a vehicle loses control and it is coming for you, you have a chance to, to dodge that accident. You get my point. So uh, such little things mean a lot and they can save us a lot. Yes, sir. How can we access that highway code? Is there actually we access it through our website? How do we purchase it? Uh, I know mm. that when you go to driving school, they mm. give you the highway code. Mm. But in case actually, someone lost the copy, how can they get it? Unfortunately, even uh, most uh, driving schools don't even take people through the highway code. They don't, which is very unfortunate. But it is there in most of the bookshops. Mukono Bookshop has it right here up at uh, is it Kimathi Avenue? that road there, near Kimathi Avenue. Yes. Yeah, they have that book. And I wish everyone could equip themselves, themselves with that book, even, even in, the, in the school curriculum. If they could get just that book to take through their pupils or students through the highway code, it could save us some lives. Yes, that's true. Knowledge is power and having knowledge on the rules and regulations as far as, as the road is concerned is key. And talking about the highway code and rules and regulations, something that uh, troubles a lot of motorists in Uganda is uh, road signs. Mm. And I, 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 maybe you can let us know and, and enlighten us on the challenges people have when it comes to understanding road signs. Mm. Do we have adequate road signs when it comes to mm -hmm. our roads, in, roads mm. in Uganda? And if people do not know these road signs, how can they get to learn them so that we have safety on our roads? Um, yes, the road signs are there. Unfortunately, <laughs> which is really absurd, you know we have so many uh, new roads. They're not new, but they are resurfaced, they, they look nice. And government has tried to put the road signs in all the necessary spots. But the Ugandan comes and cuts them off for purposes of selling them for scrap. This is happening on most of these highways that are newly constructed. And it is really absurd because road signs are the language of the road. That's how the, the road talks to you. So if you cut this language off the road, you are endangering the road user. You get my point? Because it could be warning them of a sharp corner ahead, and if that sign is not there, they won't know. So they will come, maybe driving very fast without knowing that there's a sharp corner. By the time they realize that they have to, to break, it is too late, yeah? And then they'll have to roll their vehicles or something like that. So for the road signs, yes, they are there. But unfortunately, we have 
uh, these bad Ugandans who are cutting them off the road. And how is that issue being tackled? Because I asked myself that very same question. Because mm. I've heard of that. I've also heard of mm. how people are removing uh, mm. the, the, the names of different roads, especially yeah. when it comes to KCC. Like in Kololo, yeah. actually. You, you are right. There's a time I passed in Kololo, and I found they had marked the roads very nicely. They had put all these small roads. They, they had put the names. Then I passed there some other day. They had removed all those, you know, the signs, the road signs. They had removed all of them. All of them in Kololo. So this is what is happening. And what do we do about it? Of course, if we get information, because sometimes we get intelligence that, you know, such and such people are doing A, B, C, D. Sometimes we don't get it. The, the, the most unfortunate part. But if we get information that, and uh, we also get cases where people come, you know, with uh, attires of like KCCA, for example, and then you will think that it is KCCA doing their job, yet they're actually thieves removing these uh, signs. Yeah? So it is, it is really hard, unless when we get the right intelligence to get, to get these people who are doing this, we cannot really do much. The question I always then, ask myself yeah. is, is there another material that can be used to make these road signs I, as um, attractive to thieves? I'm maybe? not privy to that information on how to, to, to do that, but I believe that the, the, the engineers at KCC can, can advise better. Yeah. Then uh, you mentioned something about people not knowing road signs. It is also true. Again, very unfortunate. Because if you went to a driving school, what did you learn? What did you learn in that driving school? That will mean that you are not ready to be on the road if you can't interpret the road signs. Because, as I said earlier, road signs are the language of the road. So if you don't know the language of the road, how are you going to be able to use the road? So it is uh, incumbent upon those driving schools to make sure that their students get right information about the, the signs on the road, the road markings, what they mean. But even before you get your permit, you are taken through a test yes. at IOV in yes. Aguru. And he takes you through this. If he finds that you are not uh, 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 well acquainted with the, with the signs on the road. They won't pass you. But some of the students, and I've mm. seen that because I've been at driving school as well, mm. some of the students I've seen uh, circumnavigate that by cramming. They mm. get the handbook and they cram. Mm. This is what this is, this is a road sign. Mm. This is a zebra crossing. Mm. So when you go to uh, the IOV mm. and they're telling you, what is this road sign? Mm. What is this road sign? Mm. Because people have crammed, they mm. give right answers and then I think if you, you if, if you are able to, to, to give a right answer, you probably have an idea of what that road sign is. But you know those, those road signs are so many that it will be very hard to cram all, all of, of them. them. So you either know them or you don't. You either know them or you don't. So it is really hard to cram because you will cram like they are over, I think, they are over 100 road signs. So we have ordering signs, we have warning signs, we have information signs. Prohibitory signs. Yeah. Mm. So there are many. You can't tell me that you will cram all of them in your head. You have to know what they mean. So does that mean that now takes us to the question of whether the driving schools we have, mm. which are licensed, by the way, mm. are doing a good job when it comes to training motorists? Actually, there's an operation going on to find out those who are teaching without the licenses from the Minister of Works and Transport because some of them are, uh, are, are doing this illegally and they are producing half-baked drivers. Drivers who know how to move their vehicle from point A to B, they are vehicle movers, they are not drivers. They are not drivers. Yes. There's a so, difference. Yes. So if you want to get good quality drivers, you have to take them through the process that is really rich and, 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 you know, informative. Other than just uh, teaching people how to move a vehicle and you produce that you are, you, are, you are producing drivers. It is wrong. Now, apart from the issue of, of uh, 
road people not knowing road signs and then the issue of people lacking the responsibility what else is the cause of accidents in uh, our society especially now we have seen there was a very bad period early on this year when we had a lot of accidents mm, mm. we had that uh, famous link bus accident mm. and it had become a really big issue so what are the what are the, the causes of these accidents um you know majorly major causes of accidents are human error human error these others that the, the, the condition of the road environmental conditions those are secondary but primarily it is human error if we could just change our behavior on the road and be more responsible and be more cautious and be more considerate on the road we wouldn't get all these crashes i'm telling you but you find people racing unnecessarily you find people wanting to overtake and then the person they try to overtake also increases speed you know you wonder why they're doing that because you have been slow in the first mm -hmm. place so if i want to overtake you why do you also increase the speed yeah so we have those conditions it is all human we have distracted driving where people use the the, the telephone and they are they are, they are, they are driving, yeah? distracted driving by, you can find someone when they are driving and they are tuning the radio, yeah? Very minute things like this, they will cause you to get involved in a crash, which is really, really bad. So if we improve our, our, our behavior on the road, hmm? then you find uh, uh, these indisciplinados here in Kampara, where they, they, they create the second and third lines and then they end up crushing other people's vehicles or brushing them or tailgating, eh, for, uh, knocking each other from behind. From behind. So it is, it is unfortunate because most countries actually, they, they all get accidents, but not to the extent that we are. Because accidents are, are a challenge everywhere in the world. It's not just in Uganda. But you find other people uh, when they are more disciplined and because of their discipline they don't have such many accidents in their countries but here it is absurd and then, uh, then you find people who are just indisciplined you, 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 can't, you, you see a T junction you have nowhere to, to go ahead and then you block the junction then uh, making these other people who would have been crossing properly unable to cross making them un unable to cross which is you know selfish you get my point. And that's why we're also introducing that yellow box that you are seeing in some places. Because it is a form of uh, traffic management that tries to control these people who are indisciplined, who block that junction boxes unnecessarily. Oh, actually, that's, mm. a, that's a very good... You've raised a good point there. Because I, I always... I've, I've noticed them and I, I, I want to understand what those yellow boxes mean. Mm. And uh, if you can explain that further. Yeah doing to curb these accidents As operators we go for these uh, programs to try to, to to tell them on how to, to to remain safe on the road and then uh, of course we, we do enforcement where we penalize uh, offenders of road traffic uh, rules we give them tickets we take them to courts of law sometimes we just caution them we tell them not to do that again depending on the demeanor of the offender. Uh, so that, that's all we do as we are mandated by, by the Traffic and Road Safety Act. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. And thank you mm. for taking us through how it's a responsibility for all of us as road users, both motorists and pedestrians, to ensure that our roads are safe and that there are no accidents. Now, you were talking about driving schools and how that is important. My question is, do these border riders have... Uh, schools where they learn how to train <laughs> as water riders <laughs> and uh, are they licensed and be because that's a big issue because going back to what you said some people know how to move cars but they're not drivers yes um uh for border border riders most of them they learn on their own how to ride a bike and he learns today the next day he's ferrying people Oh, you can imagine that risk. They have no idea what the traffic lights mean. They have no idea what the road signs mean. But they learned how to move a motorcycle. 
So uh, some schools are there, like the Uganda Drivers Standards uh, Association. That one is there. It, it teaches people how to ride well, and then they give them certificates. Um, that's the only one I know that teaches riders. But others, most of them, I would say like 95%, they teach themselves how to ride a motorcycle. And uh, yeah, to answer your question, there are not many schools that teach border border riding. Most of them use their personal initiative to learn how to, to ride. And that therein lies the problem. However, you can also learn to ride, but when you go and you are, you are proven to be competent by our LV, you are good to go. Yeah, if you can interpret the, 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 the road signs, you can do what the IOV tells to do right, there's no problem. So the IOV also carries out tests? For yes, because if you go to get a permit, you are supposed to first go through all these tests by the IOV. So you can know how to write, but you have no sign that you can interpret at all. He won't pass you. We just go tell you to go back and, and, and get more information about the, the, the road signs. But it seems like as if many of these riders don't actually have permits. Yes, they don't. They don't have permits. However, we actually get them sometimes for riding without permits. Because also we need money as, as government. We need that money. If you are reckless, if you are careless, if you are inconsiderate, if you don't abide by the traffic rules, for us we shall give you our, our tickets. And we shall get money to get our uniforms to, 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 to put on. So it is up to you. You either abide by what is necessary or you, you ignore. And then for us we shall come in for you. Is that why uh, one of the reasons why there are a lot of border border cyclists, motorcycles are being apprehended by police. We have Absolutely. seen that over the past two weeks. Absolutely, that is true. And um, unfortunately, again, most of these border borders are stolen border borders. So you see that we have so many at police stations and people are not coming to claim them. Because uh, once you come to claim your border border, you come with a logbook or the border border or you come with uh, an agreement because some people borrow money and then they, they use their logbooks as security to get the money. So if there is such an arrangement, uh, we, we demand for that agreement if you have it. And then we can use that to prove that the border border is actually yours. So without an agreement, without a logbook, people banned on those border borders because the way they got them was not in the right way. They killed people on them. Yeah, they stole them from, say, Guru brought them to Kampala. Those stolen from Kampala are taken to Guru. You get my point. So, we have so many cases of those border borders that are unclaimed. We also impounded so many border borders during the COVID lockdown. And if you remember, the president directed that all those people be given their border borders. But again, most of them have not come to claim for them. Why? Because they don't have evidence that those border borders are theirs. Yes. Oh, wow. Mm. That is why it's a very interesting indeed to have issues at hand so that we can talk about these pertinent issues that uh, pertain to society. Now, we are talking about safety on Ugandan roads. We are going in for a, a quick breather, after which we are going to return to continue on our conversations. We are going to talk about traffic lights. We are going to talk about the issue of extortion when it comes to the traffic poli police force. And then we are also going to read out your comments and your queries. Please send uh, your comments to our WhatsApp number that's 0787 447 684 and we shall hear from you and read out your comments and queries don't go anywhere this is issues at hand on Church of Uganda Family TV this is Church of Uganda Family TV enriching lives Issues at hand on Family TV and reaching lives. Welcome back to Issues at Hand. Uh, we are talking about safety on our Ugandan roads, what to look forward to as motorists and as pedestrians.
when it comes to maintaining uh, peace and order on our roads and ensuring that uh, our roads are accident free. That's the issue at hand today. And uh, with me, my guest is SP Kawuma in Serico Rogers, who is the commander of uh, traffic and road safety when it comes to Kampala Metropolitan Police. We have been talking about uh, before the break, we've been speaking about uh, traffic rules and guidelines. We've been talking about uh, driving schools. We've been talking about uh, how motorists have to have uh, licenses. We've been talking about accidents and their causes and uh, as well as road signs now we are going to deal uh, we're going to delve into very pertinent issues indeed burning issues when it comes to uh, traffic police one of the things that uh, is, is a big is a big problem in this country but i know is also a, a problem when it comes to traffic police is the issue of corruption specifically extortion from police officers when an offender is caught uh, some uh, we have had stories uh, I, that some traffic police officers ask for soda or airtime <laughs> so so as to re relieve uh, an offender of the crime and i don't know is there something that traffic police is doing to stop uh, this extortion yes i uh, thank you very much for that concern uh you know that, that that is a song that has been sung from way back when i was younger even before i joined the force however I would like to put it uh, clear that uh, the process of corruption, first of all, takes two to tango. Yeah. Because you, the giver and the receiver, you are both culpable in the offense of corruption. Now, what happens most times, it is the driver who initiates the process of corruption. And you must also know that traffic officers are not angels. They didn't, they didn't get out from heaven and fall down on earth like manna in the Bible. Yeah? They are human beings. They also have issues. Yeah? At, at, their, at their homes. They, they could be having a sick child or something. Any, anything. But if you tempt our officer with the money, Believe me, not so many will say no to that money. You get my point? Because they also have problems that are financial. So, what happens is when a traffic officer beckons you to stop and he demands, say, for your permit, you don't have it, and then the next thing you do is to pull out your wallet. Eh? You open a wallet full of bundles of money. Eh? A poor traffic officer doesn't have even in Kumi Bidi in, in the, in the trouser. Yeah? You offer 30,000, 50,000. Do you think that guy is an angel that is going to say no to that money? Of course, some of them are weak, are weak and they need that money. They will pick it. So we have to be realistic. But where I get a problem is when the traffic officer is the one who says, now you do what? Give me money. But if it is you who pulled out your money and you gave the officer without being asked, please don't say that we are corrupt. You have no right to come. You are the one who is corrupt because you are corrupting our officer. Why don't you let them do their job professionally? But where a traffic officer says, no, to do this, you give me this much money. Now, that's why I have a problem. And secondly, we have these names. We have these names on our uniforms, yeah? They are there for a purpose. So you say, Kauma Sereko demanded for money from me. But people think, oh, police is corrupt, corrupt. No one comes to say, Kauma Sereko demanded for money from me on the road. Nobody. So we call upon the public, the road users, please. If you have cases of officers Demanding from, for money from you, please, this is the name. Get the name of the officer, report that officer to us. We know how to handle them. But where you are saying, oh, they are corrupt, they are corrupt, and you are not doing your part to see that you fight this, this vice, eh? you, you rather keep quiet. You rather do what? Keep quiet. 
Because now, how, how will it die? How, if you're not doing your part? And then others are like, this, this guy is so strict, he doesn't even take money. Oh, now, yes. what, what do you want? <laughs> eh? and then you have they to do complain. That. This man, I was even giving him 20,000, he refused. And then they also go, now, Banagi, to call it. To call it. So, no. Yes, corruption is there, but what have you done to fight it? Other than making all this noise, oh, traffic is corrupt, traffic is corrupt, you are also corrupt, the giver. Actually, and I, according I, I, to that, I think I, I, I heard on, in the Anti Corruption Act something, some, some, some section, you are both are supposed to go in. For the offense of corruption. And I've had uh, uh, people in my spaces, some mm. who say, hey, but uh, when it comes to, to, to Nigeria, maybe there's a, that police officer is better, he's more lenient, this one here is so tough. Uh, yes. actually, you know, I know what you're it. saying, exactly. <laughs> yes. So uh, that, that story should just, should just die. But also on that issue, mm. could it be, now we have seen uh, over the past couple of months, government employees who have been striking for salary enhancements, mm. uh, in this mm. case the teachers, could it mm. be also that uh, traffic police officers need to be paid better so that they are protected <laughs> against being tempted by uh, traffic offenders? I wish we could be paid better, really, because uh, we, 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 we collect a lot of money for, for government as, as, as the traffic department. That is a given. We collect billions of money in EPS tickets. So if they could cater for us also, it would be nice. But of course, we can't come and say, oh, we need this money. We need No, we can't. We are not allowed to do that. But it would be nice if we were given a good, a good, a good, uh, what would I call it? Appreciation. Because we do a lot so to collect this money. We do. We do. And yes. uh, speaking on uh, tickets, I know this is a very salty issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, even this week I was sharing with you during the break that this week I, I was going along a road and uh, traffic police were stopping motorists, checking whether they had pending tickets and penalties that needed to be paid. And some people were trying to dodge using certain roads. So on the issue, of, uh, take us to the issue of tickets. Why mm -hmm. is it? Uh, we have also heard from someone who said he found a ticket mm. on his car that he didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. He didn't know about <laughs> it. And why is that so? Is there a problem with the system? Mm. Is it that maybe as motorists you give your car to someone else and he gets a ticket and he doesn't uh, inform uh, you? Now you've asked a question and you have answered it. <laughs> <laughs> you asked a question and you have answered it. Uh, we get these cases a lot. And uh, people come with all sorts of reasons. Oh, you know, I use my car alone. I don't give out my car, but I have a ticket on this. I don't know how, I don't know how it came about. But come on, let's be serious. <laughs> There's no way a ticket, a, a ticket can be issued to a car out of the blue. No. It can only happen when... Uh, an officer who's punching in the information in the machine maybe calls your car something else. Maybe you're driving a Mercedes-Benz and then uh, in the details the officer puts a spacio. Now that becomes a contested ticket. Those are the cases we have. And in such cases, we task the officer because we were taken through this training on how to use these machines. And we were clearly told that if you fail to put in the right information in the machine and uh, the offender comes and complains that this is not my car, the officer is supposed to pay for that ticket. Because first of all, it is issued. That is already revenue. There's no way you can, you can withdraw it. So you have to punch in the right information on the driver and the vehicle. So if you, if, you, if you are doing it hurriedly and maybe you just punch in because of, uh, I don't know, some distractions or something, the officer pays for that ticket. So the information has to be right that this is a UBL, figure this, this, and it is a land cruiser. Yet indeed, it is a land cruiser. But if you put any other information, the client can say, no, this is not my car. And he's listened to. 
and Nampima handles our, our PR on Nampima, also handles APS. He handles the APS office in Natete. And these are the cases he, uh, she settles. Yeah. And then when it comes to tickets, I, and I know many people complain the amounts are high, can mm. you take us through some of the offenses that get mm. you tickets and how much those tickets cost? And then where can we go to, to clear those tickets in mm. case as a motorist you have been given one by a traffic police officer? Of course for speed, it is, it is one of the highest with 200,000 fine and uh, of course inconsiderate is a hundred thousand but also you must remember that if you take long to pay it attracts a surcharge of 50 percent if the ticket uh, if, if the ticket was was a hundred thousand and you don't pay within the stipulated time of 28 days it will attract 50 percent or uh, 50 thousand so you have to pay 150,000. And also what the public should know is that they are revising the period. It was 28 days, but they are revising it to four days, within which you are supposed to have paid that ticket. When the four days expire, the ticket will attract a surcharge of 50%. So that is under revision, and it is in the pipeline, and soon, it will be effective and we shall, we shall, we shall start enforcing. On, yes. that, on that issue of enforcement, mm -hmm. you know, because I know <laughs> uh, this, the 28 days and uh, uh, we are protected as drivers because sometimes we take it for granted. We say, ah, they are giving me a ticket, I'll pay it at any time. Yes. But uh, how can the traffic police, I know motorists are looking at me and saying, but I thought you were on our side. <laughs> no, but we have to be on the side of the law. Mm -hmm. How can the traffic police better enforce the payment of these tickets because some people take long without paying them yeah and they, they even sell their cars they transfer the cars to other people with the tickets on oh yes i mean i'm great. also actually calling anyone who's intending to buy a vehicle to first go to police and ensure that that vehicle you're buying doesn't have any tickets pending because people fall into these traps i have a friend who bought a car recently a harrier she's my og only to find tickets of 900,000 on that vehicle. And she called that, you know what, I've just found out that this car has tickets of 900,000. I told her, sorry about that, you were supposed to find out about that information earlier before you bought that car. Then you pay less the tickets found on the car. Because that's what people do now. You come to police, verify that this vehicle has so many tickets, you go and settle with a sailor that you now found the vehicle has tickets of 900,000. What do we do about this? So when you are paying, you pay less the amount of the tickets on the vehicle and then you go and clear the tickets. Yeah. And how uh, can we clear those tickets? Where do we go? For some of us, uh, and like, uh, like we mentioned, mm. there, are, there are people who might have gone to driving school and they got a license and they are driving, but when they get a ticket, they might not know how to clear that ticket and where to go mm. to. Now, all banks in Uganda have their URI account. So you can go to the bank and pay at the bank. Or you can go to these banking agents in town here and pay. Or you can use these machines, payway machines and pay. And uh, we also want, we, we, we advocate that uh, payments could be made through mobile money. But it is still, I think, stuck somewhere but it will be easier and convenient for road users to pay using their mobile money because not everyone has the time to go to the bank lobbies and keep in the lines and so we would wish that it is also put on mobile money and then you can pay the way you pay for your water bills yes and electricity it would work well yeah yeah you had it right there you don't have an excuse now you know how to pay for uh, those tickets and where to pay from. Uh, another issue, a burning issue when it comes to uh, road safety mm. and uh, traffic is the issue of traffic lights. For me, mm. my issue one, I, and, and we have a, a program called Good Morning Family where mm. they have a segment 
that has city codes where they, they, they talk about different things as far as uh, uh, navigating the city is concerned. And in mm -hmm. one of the segments, they, they interviewed people and they discovered that many motorists actually don't know the, how, how traffic, uh, traffic lights work, what they mean, which is strange, I know. <laughs> they don't know what they mean. But also, there's an the issue of traffic lights not working. And as well, when you add to that, there's another issue of traffic lights being on, but we have a traffic police officer who is guiding the traffic, mm. and you don't know whether to follow the traffic lights or the traffic <laughs> police officer. <laughs> I'm laughing about that question for a reason, because there's a time when people are complaining about traffic on the traffic lights, and they would write in the papers complaining, oh, these traffic officers cause a lot of jam, what, what, what. So at the time, our boss then ordered that we let the traffic lights do their work and that we should be on the road just to attend to accidents, minor accidents and whatever, but not to control the traffic and let the traffic lights do what? Their job. I don't know whether you were in the city at that time and you saw what happened in this city. Yes, I was. There were just two days. But I tell you, we had the last laugh. We had the last laugh, reason being, people suffered in this city. Someone would leave work at 5, reach home at midnight. Just from here, CPS Rubaga. <laughs> <laughs> no, but why is that? that why, why is that the traffic lights are clear? They are, they are clear. Why is it that as a, as a society, mm. why is it that we can't adhere to those traffic lights? Because, you know the problem we have, why our officers are there at traffic lights? The technology we have on our lights is not uh, smart, it's not intelligent. Developed countries have what they call intelligent lights. What those lights do, uh, they don't release a side, for example, that doesn't have cars they will give more time to sides that have cars. cars to flow. You get my point. But here we have lights that even release an empty side. And they block others that would have been moving. That's so true. we do that manually. We do what those lights would have done until such a time when we get those intelligent lights here. Because for them they will sense that this side has so many cars. There's so much traffic. So they will release that side longer so that it eases on the movement for people moving from that side. And it won't release sides that don't have cars. <laughs> Unless when the car comes that side, that's when it will release it. So we are doing that manually here. But because people didn't know, they complained. And I'm still... Also hearing some other voices coming up again, I think we should also sample them. <laughs> and they see that say, we are actually on the road, not as to flowers help. to be admired, <laughs> but for a purpose. You get my point? So we are there for that purpose, my, uh, my moderator. And why, don't the, why is it that sometimes the traffic lights don't work? Yeah, of course, uh, there are times when they, we have power failure because they work on power. And then... Uh, uh, Sometimes people knock them, like this one of Entebbe Road was knocked, Entebbe Road traffic lights. That's why those lights are off. So we usually deploy there our traffic every day to help in uh, management of that place. So this is what happens, because it, it happens. And then we also have a problem that most of these traffic lights are not properly synchronized. Uh, there are those that release cars for a very short time. Eh? very short time, it releases like two cars and then it blocks. So that, that challenge is also there and we are trying to engage the KCC people to come and try to synchronize those lights properly. Because I, 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 have, I can give you many, I can give some in Intinda, there are traffic lights in Sasi, there's this one at uh, Nakulabi, Na, Nakulabi, yes, traffic lights. They release uh, uh, cars for a very short time, like, like this one's coming from Mango. Uh, Makere Hill Road, very short, like three cars pass, and then it blocks. So these are the, the problems we have. So 
they are there. And uh, as, as motorists and as people use these roads, we have to understand what these traffic lights mean. Mm. And we have to also follow the, tra the guidance by the traffic police officers. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, when it, good conversations always have to come to an end. But uh, Afande, I would like you to give your final remark as concerns road safety in Uganda. What would you like the viewers to take away concerning keeping road safety in Uganda? Yes, our viewers today we call upon you first of all to ensure because we're losing so many people in road traffic crashes you have families to look after uh, you have work you're doing which will all come to a halt when you lose your life so i'm calling upon you all to please 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 ensure safety for yourself first and then safety for others. This country will be developed by people, not, not ghosts. We don't want your ghost to be here to develop this country. We want you, the human being, to be able to, first of all, develop the country, then fend your, for your family. Because once you're, the head of family is gone, you never know what will happen to your wife and your children. They will end up you know, being unable to go to school. Yeah, you never know what might happen. So we don't wish that to happen for you and I. So let's all be more responsible on the road, be more considerate, and I leave God in your hands. Thank you so much, SP Kawuma and Sirko Rogers, for coming to Issues at Hand yes. and for addressing this issue of road safety in Uganda. You're welcome. And you're very free to come back and address any other issue that mm. you may have to tackle as well and thank you thank our you. viewers for watching this program and for being part of the family as we were discussing this issue we are very glad always to have you on board and uh, you've heard from a fan day he has said one it is our personal responsibility as road users both as motorists and pedestrians to ensure that we follow the traffic rules and regulations so that our roads are safe but most importantly especially as family members that we are remain alive and well accidents you've heard uh, him say that about 80 people die per week when it comes to road accidents 500 uh, uh, 500 people there are a lot of statistics that are saying road carnage is a major major problem in this country and so as a family member, as a head of a family, as a father, as a mother, you do not want to lose your life on a road accident. You do not know what will happen to your children when you pass away. So as family, let us be keen when it comes to following the traffic rules and regulations and being proper road users so that we will keep ourselves safe and healthy so that we can develop the country together as Afande has mentioned. Thank you for joining us on Issues at Hand today. Uh, please, God bless you and enjoy your weekend. This is Church of Uganda Family TV, enriching lives.